Hey everybody, and welcome to another Project Zomboid Mapping 101. Now in the last couple of videos that we did, uh, you know, a bit over a month ago, we set up our world and we basically went through most of the basic steps on how to make stuff look cool and make, you know, a nice and playable world. But this video is going to be a little bit different, we're going to do some more advanced stuff. And to get started with this video, I want to talk a bit about the rules file. Now, what is the rules file? At the moment you are going to generate your world from BMP to TMX, there are a couple of options. Now, the first one we've discussed, because that's basically just where you export your stuff to. But the second one is the rules file. And that's something you can actually edit and you know make changes to and really use it in your advantage to speed up your general process of making your maps. Now in my case, I have different rule fi rules files. I recommend always making a backup just in case you actually fuck something up. Um, but I'm gonna close this menu. All right, so we are now in a rules file and there are a whole bunch of entries here that probably don't make much sense to you from the get go. Um, I think it's wise to start where we understand it and then build from there and explain the file. So I'm not going to start from version one and go just scroll down and explain it to you because that doesn't make any sense. So when we are drawing our file in Photoshop, we have these colors that we can work with, which I have explained in my previous video. So you've probably watched those. So I'm going to assume you guys have that knowledge. So you have, you know, the dark grass colors, the medium grass colors, the road colors, you know, and, and so forth and so forth and so on, etc., etc. Yeah, let's not use Dutch words and combine them in English. That's not gonna work. But the point is, you kind of get what I'm going here, coming from. And there's a bird on the roof, which is also distracting. I have like no sleep, so that's why I'm rambling a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so you use these specific colors to draw stuff and those colors are located a little bit down the road. So here you have certain rules and then you have a label, a bitmap, a color, which is the one I'm talking about right now, and the tiles that are listed for it, and then the layer that it should be on. And the same goes for trees and all different kinds of combinations that you have. So uh, yeah, let's take the trees as a example here. So we have a rule for the tree with the label trees, and then it calls for a bitmap image which in this case is one. Now we have the option between zero for a bitmap image and the option between one for a bitmap image. Now that's the difference between the regular map that you're drawing for your world and the vegetation map that you're drawing for your world. And the regular map is being picked up by bitmap zero. Your vegetation is picked up by bitmap one. That's very simple. If you wanna put something on your vegetation map, give it the bitmap one value if you want to put it something on the regular map, give it a bitmap zero value. Now, after that, we can define a specific color. In this case, the color is 255 for red, which makes it fully red, and then zero for green and zero for blue. So those are your RGB values. Now, if I put these into Photoshop, you can do this in any program, that should be an issue. I can do 255, by zero, zero. And if you've been playing around with, you know, the, the map editor and drawing your images, you can probably recognize that this red color means that it's a dense forest. It's all trees, no bushes, no bullshit. So that color right there in the file corresponds to the one that you're drawing inside of Photoshop or Paint.net or GIMP. Now below that, there are the tiles that can be used in this rule. And then you have a layer which specifies on which layer it should be drawn. That's very, that's, that's kind of the basics of the basics. Now with that explanation, you can scroll down and see that there are different colors for different trees and you can, you know, specify more tiles for it actually to work, or you can actually specify 
entire groups of tiles. So we have dark long grass here. If we search for that, we can actually find that. But we should go up and not down. Here in the alias, there is an alias for dark long grass. This just defines that these tiles all are all represented by this single name. So with this name, you can use all of these tiles or all of these tiles are called upon. Now make sure that this is an alias and not a rule because the rules are the ones that, you know, the colors get picked up upon. The aliases can be called in those rules. So in this dark long grass alias, let me scroll down again. You can see that here dark long grass is called upon in the rule for trees and dark grass. Now you may ask why is this listed twice? Basically it creates a list of all of these things, all of the entries, and then <coughs> sorry, all of these entries, and then every entry has the same chance of appearing. Now, if we only have dark long grass once, then the chance of it appearing is just as high as it appearing as the dark medium grass. But in this case, the label, the, the, the function of the rules, trees plus dark grass. So it's more in our, um, wow, words are very hard if you don't sleep. We want it to have more dark grass. So if we add, we add more entries for dark long grass, and this is by default. Um, so there's a bigger chance of it showing up. Now, the only exception from this rule to the other one, aside from more entries, is that there is a condition down below. Now, in general, you don't have to play around with conditions, but a condition can mean that a certain color has to be underneath on the regular layer, on the layer where you draw your roads and, you know, the regular grass, um, to be underneath for this rule to work. And with in you know, using this, you can make exceptions so that you can't actually draw this stuff on roads, um, but you don't really have to play around with this. Now, why is knowing all of this useful? Now, in my case, I copied the entire file and named it rules edit Diederik, because that's my name. And I can, you know, find it back. And I added a whole bunch of entries on the bottom. I actually added entries for a whole bunch of fences. So I can just draw these fences out in Photoshop and uh, copy and paste them, which works for certain parts. I wouldn't recommend doing it for all fencing in your, in your map, but it can really speed things up. Now, the ones that I am most excited about are, for example, this flower field, random, which I, I'd like to spawn flowers in my world at random, hence the rule. And I simply made a rule for that. I have a label called flower, fields, ra flower field random. It is on my vegetation map. Uh, I, uh, I picked a color for it that wasn't used by anything else. And I just selected a, or you know searched for and then put them in here a whole bunch of entries for different flowers that I liked to appear in this rule and of course it spawns on the vegetation layer so if I draw this color the one this RGB here in Photoshop and then I you know do BMP to TMX in my world I can actually spawn flower fields and that's very useful because that speeds up a lot of things as I'm quite handy with Photoshop and I can do a lot of things with that but I did the same things for bushes and I have uh, farm plants I have hay I have the tomatoes and the cabbages and corn um, and that really helps me speed up making farm fields because I can just throw down a whole bunch of tomato plants and make it look nice very fast very easily in Photoshop and then just put it into the game and it all just works I wouldn't recommend actually putting a lot of tomatoes and cabbages and corn all over the place because it's a lot of tiles that have a function where they have to calculate if it has water or you know, if it's drying out and stuff like that, uh, which can impact performance. So just putting that out there. <laughs> but um, if you if you do it sparingly, I think you will be just fine. 
Now I did the same thing for example, this rule for the, the horizontal dirt. I call it dirt horizontal. Um, this is in bitmap zero, so I can actually spawn like acres and stuff or uh, farmland. I think that's the right term um, with a specific color. And then the tiles it's pulling from, I actually put alias right above it. And then I put the tile in there. Now in this case, I don't think I could, I should have called, or I, I probably shouldn't or didn't have to use an alias for this because it's only a single entry. But that was back when I, my understanding of the file was, you know, not as at the same level as it is right now. And it, it really didn't hurt. But you could have probably just put this in there. Just don't forget the brackets and then you'll be fine. This allows me, if I actually open up the world editor and go into my world um, and scroll down a little bit to create entire farm fields. Let's see, like this with hay or well, more hay or flower fields like that with just a single color in Photoshop. And that really speeds up the process for me a lot. And that's why the rules file is very useful. Now you can actually set up custom blends in your rules file, but there's also a blends file to support that. And that's a giant pain. And I'll probably explain that in a different video. And I hope, I really hope this kind of clears this up for you because I, I don't think this was the best video. But I had like four hours of sleep, so, you know, please, please bear with me. Um, if you do like these videos, uh, always uh, feel always free to subscribe and like these videos. And if you really want to support this stuff, then uh, go ahead and support me on Patreon. I have a couple of people that support me on Patreon and I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much, guys. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I hope you have a very, very nice day.